If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is after all why they crucified him. <laughs>
And then there is a prophet, he claimed, that this stone is going to come in the judgment day and is going to witness for every Muslim. And he claimed that the black stone is the right hand of Allah. Whoever touch it, it erases his sin. So obviously, all right, I mean, come on, Islam and Christianity, it's just the same thing. The Christian, they worship the black stone too, and they kiss it, you know. And Christians maybe believe that the black stone is the right hand of Jesus. <laughs> you know, when I say stupidity is amazing, we have to say it. I mean, and by the way, there's a guy, uh, there's a guy, his name is Stefan. You know, Stefan? I don't know if he's listening. This is, you know, from time to time, I get some uh, people who say stupid things, you know, and Stefan is one of them. So Mr. Stefan, he said, uh, you know, why you are bullying, you're doing bully to this guy, something like that, you know, why you, why you bully this guy? Which guy? The guy we spoke to him yesterday or two days ago. Uh, we are not doing bully. If I call him stupid, he's stupid. I mean, some people who claim to be Christians, they are the last one to be considered Christians. Should I use the same words as Jesus say to him, evil generation, son of serpent, Satan? Huh? I did not use any of those words. So if you are saying that if I use donkey, stupid, idiot, those are bully, well, obviously you are a certified liar. You are no Christian because you never read the Bible. The Bible, you know, consider people who they don't believe in Jesus, foolish, stupid, idiot, liars, hypocrite. It depends who they are, for sure. Like, you know, not everyone, uh, we cannot call somebody a liar who do not know who is Christ yet, right? Uh, but there's people who lie about Christ. So when, when somebody like Mr. Stefan, he come to us from the middle of nowhere and he tried to give us a lecturer, obviously Mr. Stefan, he is false Christian. And not only that, he said, this is not how we talk to Muslims. And he said, I went to Afghanistan three, three times serving in the USA Army. So it looked like this guy, when he was going to uh, Afghanistan, he was giving the Afghani a hug, not a bullet. You know, he go there, he's a Christian. He have a gun in his hand, but he never use it because he's a Christian, you know. He don't call them stupid or no. We just give them a bullet. So, you know, there is a lot of silly people who try to school you about how to do things, but they themselves, they never made a Muslim leave Islam. They never made a Muslim accept Jesus. They never even debated with a Muslim. And then they come and they try to school you about how to talk to Muslims. Those people, I, I believe, I mean, it's the internet. You do not know you are talking to who. It might be even a Muslim, you know. Uh, but when you see such people, right away, you are speaking to the hypocrite. Jesus who spoke about them, those who see the little thing inside the cup, you know, outside the cup, but they don't see the whole big thing inside the cup, they will swallow it. Those, the ones who they, they, they make, uh, they make it, uh, uh, they, they make an elephant go inside a, a needle, you know, and it's okay for them. Uh, the needle eye. Uh, they come and they school you about how to talk, how not to talk. My friend, if you are a person who can do better, show us how you can do better. I want to see you. Uh, you know, uh, bringing Muslims out of Islam and teaching them and uh, show us how to do it. And I want to learn from you, you know. Anyway, we go back to our topic. <laughs> so Mr. Barak of Africa, you know, the genius, when he said this, uh, he said that we are just the same. And then he says, there is two group, authoritarians and Unitarians, uh, and then he says, do the Turretinians accept the authority of the Council of Jerusalem, Act 15, 33? No, yet Islam does. Uh, but if we ask you, you idiot, if we go to Act 15, 33, who is the one there? You will see that all the disciples of Jesus is there. And they are the one who made the Council. They are the one who come with the decision. And this is about circumcision. So here you see the stupidity of those liars, you know, because always they accuse Paul, as you see here. Was Paul a true apostle? Yes, he was. If so, why does the Catholic Church attribute his tradition to the Twelve and Jesus himself? I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid comment or is that English? I mean, in you, based on your English, you ask the question if, if Paul is uh, apostle, 
a true apostle. And then you give the answer, says yes. And then you are asking the Catholic Church why they attribute his tradition to the 12 and Jesus himself. Well, if he's apostle, that means he is apostle. <laughs> yeah, boy. Don't get married. Stefan, I'm not Stefan, sorry, uh, Pax Africana. Don't get married because obviously you are a certified genius. In my book, genius, when I call you genius, that's when you are a certified donkey. So you just said he is an apostle, and then you are saying why they attribute to Jesus. Well, he's apostle of who? You idiot. As long as he's apostle, that means he's apostle of Jesus. Idiot. And if we go and read, let us open Act 15, you know. Uh, it's a good start for today. It's Sunday. Let us read the Bible a little bit so we can laugh at those liars. If we go to uh, Act 15, 22, 33, I think those people do not know what they are reading. Uh, and by the way, they choose for you even what verses to read. I mean, why do you want to waste your time? You know what I mean? But come on, we will, we will choose for you what verse exactly uh, to read. And uh, because they are so serious uh, not to waste your time, but in fact, they don't want you to see that they are a bunch of idiots. If you see here, this is this is uh, simply, you know, when uh, new people, they start coming to Christianity, and specifically non-Jews, they start asking, well, should, Acts they, 15. Uh, should they do circumcision? Because they are not Jews. They are not, you know, the, the, the order was to the Jews people too. Children of Abraham, those are not children of Abraham. So should they circumcise? So what was the conversation? Let us watch together. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phoenice and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church, and of the apostles and elders, and they declared all things that God had done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, saying, that it was needful to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us, that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving and them the Holy Ghost. Here, I want to stop it uh, a second. Do you see what Peter, he called Jesus? Did you see what Peter called Jesus? Who is the one who gave Peter the command? God. Who is God? Who is God? This is Jesus. This is from the early church. This is from the early church. Are, are you with me? This is from the early church. This is not centuries after. Those are, this is Peter. So, uh, uh, who gave me the command? God. Which God we are talking about? This is Jesus. If you go back to the comment of this idiot, he said that there is a, the challenge is between Unitarian and Territarian. But as you see, Peter, he just called Jesus God. It's not Paul only. And all the disciples agree with him. Peter is the rock, and I build my church on you. So those liars they don't even know what they are talking about, and they try to quote for you verses supposedly will defeat your faith. But don't go by their quotation 22, 33. Read the chapter, and you will start laughing at their lies. So here, you know, Peter, he declared that Jesus is God, and he gave him a command. And what is the command? 
Read carefully. Let us continue. Ghost, even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved. Stop here. You see here that Peter is the one who is talking. You see this potato he is saying that Paul is the one who is opposing the circumcision. Peter is talking, and Peter is saying that Jesus, he taught us that we are saved by faith. You know, the funny thing about Mohammedan, they are the same as, uh, I don't want to use like a word, word will hurt your feeling, because, you know, I don't, I don't like to hear it hurt their feeling. You know, you know me, I mean, come on, by now you know. Uh, but in the Middle East, there is a state where a whore, you know, it's like a saying, a whore. She speak about everybody. In a, she bad mouth everybody. Why? Because she want to make all the women in the neighborhood look like a whore. So she will not be the only one. So a Mohammedan who do not know what he's reading, he act like a whore. He skip all the chapter. And then he select for you a verse or two. And this is, this is the whole chapter. That's it. Don't read the rest. This is a whore behavior. A whore is not only a woman she take off her panty for sex, it's a man who sell his God, his dignity, his truth, his truth and truthful, and he sell himself to the devil. And you see it every day. So you are, you are purifying by faith, and that makes sense. You know, when God, he gave order, command of circumcision, there's a reason. And it's not really your penis will make you go to heaven or to hell. I mean, that will make, if, if this is true, then uh, that God is silly, you know. But this is not the reason. There's a nation to be known and to be healthy. You know, circumcision is very healthy too. You know, in the old days, when somebody is kidnapped from his tribe, how the family, they will know that this person is from them. The Arab, they used to do a tattoo. They make a tattoo in the face, some in the arm, some in the shoulder. But usually they do it in the face right away. So when even they face each other in the, in the field, they're fighting. Right away, when you see the tattoo in the face of the person, you don't kill him because you know that this is from your tribe. So the Israeli, they, are, they have an identity. They are different. And here you notice that if you go in the Quran, when Muhammad he says that the Sabian, they go to heaven too. And you might say to yourself, what does this have to do with circumcision or the topic? The Sabian, they have a book, it's called Kanzarabba. In their Kanzarabba book, they call the God of the Jews Satan. Why? because he ordered them to do circumcision. This is what the Sabian believe. The Sabian, they hate the Jews, why? Because they believe that the God of the Jews is the one who killed their people in Egypt. Pharaoh, Pharaoh, according to them, he was a Sabian. Surprisingly, you will see that Muhammad is adopting the Sabian to be part of his God. Do you see it? The Sabian, they will go to heaven. You ask any Muslim, is the Sabian people who believe in Allah? Go and read Ibn Kathir, go read Al-Tabari, Al go and read, you will see a Sabian are people who worship stars. So how a Sabian, who they consider Adonai, this was written in their book, Adonai, the God of the Jews, is the devil. He ordered them to circumcise themselves. How Muhammad, he put those things together. In the same time, when we read 
in the Bible, as we see, we will notice that Christianity, all the Christians from the beginning, agree that Jesus is God, and we witness to people that we've been given wisdom by the Holy Ghost, and people are saved by faith, not by their penis. Penis is very important in Islam. We have to understand that because this is a penis penis cult. But here, if we ask ourselves, this guy is talking about circumcision, and look how much it's important for him circumcision. But he did not ask himself, then how come Muhammad never gets circumcised? I see some Muhammad and keep saying, I challenge Christian Prince, I challenge Christian Prince. Well, my friend, I will open my sky for you to see how strong you are. The last Muslim who did that, he was out of gas in less than two minutes. Let me open my Skype because I see somebody is so excited. He want to uh, challenge me. And, you know, I cannot really uh, waste a chance uh, to be challenged. I like, to, I like to be challenged. Let me open my Skype. Uh, I want to see if this is a challenge in the chat or a challenge in for real, you know, we will see. You know. Because sometimes those Mohammedan is like somebody who's screaming in the middle of the street, who want to fight? Who want to fight? Who want to fight? And then one, he said, you know what? I want to see what this guy, he can do. I want to fight. The second he said, okay, I want to fight. The guy, he says, well, I just want to see how many people here like, are willing to fight. That's all. I don't want to fight anyone. <laughs> anyway, so my Skype is open. Mr. Idris, if you are a hero, give me a text. I will call you immediately. So here we ask this person, his name is Pax Africana. As long circumcision is so important. And you claim, as you claim, that Islam and Christianity is the same belief. And you claim that the one who don't accept circumcision or don't practice it no more, they are wrong. And you claim that the Christian should be Unitarian, but as you see, Peter, Paul, Timothy, all of them. And by the way, if you go and see Chapter uh, Acts, 17, uh, Acts 16, actually, Acts Act 16, yeah, uh, you will see Paul encouraging Timothy to do circumcision. As simple as that. So you are a stupid liar. You don't know even what you are talking about. But as long as circumcision is so important, how you can explain to me, you potato, that your prophet himself never did circumcise himself? Anyone else can explain? Any Muslim can explain to us, as long circumcision is so important, how come Muhammad never did circumcision? You cannot debate Muslims. Are you bullying Muslims? You cannot debate atheists? Well, you know, first I don't bully anyone, but if you think you are stupid, and then the second I say to you, you are stupid, this, this means you believe in yourself that you are stupid, then you think this is a bully, this is your, this is your problem. But as long as you are saying you are an atheist and we cannot debate you, my friend, you are a person who believes that you are a monkey. You used to be a sail, you know, and then the cow, she drops some poopoo on you, and this sail grow fertilized, you know, because now you have all the DNA you need. And you start eating the poopoo, and then you grow and you became an ape. And you are saying to me, you cannot debate an atheist. I mean, a person who want to debate me to prove to me that he's an animal. I agree. You are. The second I say to you, you are an animal, you get upset. <laughs> Just agree with an atheist. He will be all over you. He tried to convince you 24 hours, seven days a week that he is an animal. The second you say, you say to him, you are, okay, you are an animal, he gets upset. Here we go, he's bullying me. Stupid people, I mean, low class, uh, low, low IQ, I don't know what's wrong. Monkey, the monkey logic, you know. Uh, once an atheist, he asked me a question, which is actually very embarrassing. He said to me, uh, I, you know, I answer naturally because I'm a very natural person, you know. And now he will say, you see, natural, is a, is a, this is the proof, you know. So he asked me, do you like banana? I said, yes. He said, see, I just got you busted. Your ancestor, they used to be monkeys. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. 
Actually, Muslims and atheists, they share a lot of things. As an example, the stupid Muhammad, he believe, uh, he shared a lot of things with the atheists in such a way about the monkeys. As an example, the Muslims, they believe that monkeys, they used to be Jews. The atheists, they believe uh, that Jews used to be monkeys. And which means them, you know, because I, I don't know. Is Darwin, Darwin, he stole his theory, theory, by the way, from somebody else. We found that even Darwin is a thief. So look at this. The Muslims believe that uh, uh, monkeys are Muslims and they practice Sharia law. And once upon the time, there was a, a female monkey, she, and they practice Sharia law. And once upon the time, there was a, a female monkey, she cheated her husband. And that's why I would never marry a monkey. Female monkey, I mean, you know? I mean, come on. Obviously, they cheat, you know, they, they, they are willing to, to cheat just for the sake of a banana. So a big uh, monkey come from behind the tree, and he have a big banana in his hand. Don't take me my, my word in the wrong way. I'm talking about a real banana, literally, you know. So he blinked to her. He said, you want a banana? Like, you know, banana? Mm. <laughs> you know, so the monkey, this female monkey, she could not resist the temptation. And then the monkey, she went behind the tree, and they did boom, boom. And, you know, and then, uh, uh, you know, the Muslims, uh, they, uh, uh, the, the Muslim monkey, when his wife, she came back, she tried to put her hand. If you read the story, it's in my book, Six Allah. She tried to put her hand under the head of her husband, Mr. Shapanzi. And Mr. Shapanzi is very smart. He starts sniffing his vagina. And you know, come on, he have a nose, big nose. So he noticed that there is something fishy there. You know, somebody put some fertilization there. So he started, ha, 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 and he called, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. All the Muslim monkeys came and they started stoning the female monkey. And then a Muslim guy was walking by, he witnessed that, and he starts stoning the female monkey with them. So if you're an atheist, you can use this hadith to prove your point. Both of you, you share the same stupidity. Anyway, the Chinese, they are always wrong, except in one thing. When they said he left as a donkey, and he came back, he never came back as a horse. In this scenario here, an atheist, he left as a monkey, he never came back as a human. Eh, what we can say. So I don't know if I was able to answer you as a, about being an atheist and you are so smart. And obviously we are dummy to believe we are human, we are not monkeys. But you share a lot of things with Muhammad, so I think you should convert to Islam. Uh, we, have, uh, we have a Muslim texting me. Let us see. Don't text me to say hi, I will block you. You know, if you want to text me to say I'm a Muslim, I'm a debate, you know, you're welcome. You say to me hi, you wave your hand. I will wave my foot in your face. Uh, let us see this uh, this uh, guy. I mean, this guy uh, every day, every day, almost he called me. He got a spank and he leave. I think he like it. You know. You know, there, there's a lion. He uh, uh, there is a lion very famous in the in the jungle. I will tell you this joke after we finish with Mr. Muhammad. Let us mute the speaker of Pal Talk of uh, sorry Skype, so you don't get annoyed. Hello. Uh, yes, Muhammad. What do you want to say to us? Uh, uh, you have been mocking Muslim because of circumcision, but I I read in the Bible in the book of Genesis, chapter seventeen, verse fourteen, where Almighty God said. I don't hear you. Sized. He shall be cut off. Hello? Yeah. As long as long you are a person who supports circumcision, and I'm not against it. Who said we are against it? You are stupid. But as long you are saying that you are a Muslim and uh, you... Not, hold on. You are a Muslim, you follow the Old... Me, you are a Muslim, you are a Muslim who want to follow the Old Testament, correct? So how come your prophet never been circumcised? That's not my question. So you are calling me to school me about circumcision, and then you are a prophet himself, he never circumcised. You need to explain to me why. Either you are following the order of. Oh, shut up, shut up. Don't see me, don't see me, don't see me, don't see me. You need to explain to me how those people they claim that circumcision is a must. Their best man, don't you Muslim, aren't you Sunnah? Sunnah is to practice what Muhammad did. Did Muhammad ever hold his penis and he used a qaddum, as he said, that Abraham, he used a qaddum to cut his penis, ads. So did Muhammad use the ads or he ever circumcised himself? 
No, this is the reason you always win the debate because you want to change the topic. You need to answer me. If you are schooling me about circumcision, well, yes, yes, yes. All the answers, stupid. All he was circumcised. Peter, all the disciple of Jesus was circumcised, and Jesus, shut up. And Jesus, he was circumcised. Why you're a prophet? Why you're a prophet? Why you're a prophet was not circumcised. Okay, okay. Sipi, if you are pro Christian, then please let me talk. Then you can find. Yeah, but you need to answer me. Why your prophet was not circumcised? Yes, yes, okay. Okay, let me, let me go further. First of all, I want to read from the Old Testament. No, before yeah, you answer book, about the, but, this, but, this is not your book. Before you tell me, tell me about your prophet. Why he did not circumcise himself by the ads, like Abraham? So afraid of your book. I why your prophet did I, I not circumcise? Is your Sleepy. prophet? Is why your pro Shut up. Why your prophet did not circumcise himself by an ads like Abraham? CP, CP, you know, just, you, you just, you just let, uh, let your dad talk to me. I mean, did you see how stupid they are? They school you about circumcision, and their best man himself, he never does circumcision. So based in the book you did read for me, from the Old Testament, your prophet is filthy. Do you see the stupidity? And you know, I don't know. I mean, Abraham is a good man. But it's very weird that Abraham is using an ads or aids, I don't know what they call it, uh, in order to cut, uh, to do circumcision. I mean, do you know how big this thing? This is what Abraham he used to do circumcision to himself, brother. You know, I don't think Abraham, he have a penis of an elephant. Where Muhammad he get this information from? And as long as Abraham, he cut his penis by ads, why Muhammad don't choose one? It's very simple. Let Aisha hold it for you. If it's too small, so it doesn't move, or glow it. Or, you know, get two of the Sahaba to hold it for you. Or to, first, they have to find it, you know. It's very hard. I heard that Muhammad, he have a big, big zipper. Not because his penis was big, but it was so hard to find his penis when he went to pee. That's why he used to pee like a woman. So here we go. We have Abraham. He cut his penis. I mean, how in the world he did that? By an ads. At that time, there's no, there's no knives. Ads? Like he put it in the table like, Hey, Allahu Akbar, man, what if he miss? Only in Islam, religion is about penis. It's a penis cult. This is why their prophet, he promised them, when they go to heaven, their penis will be endless. And then when the Muhammadan, they speak about circumcision, we find that Muhammad himself, he never been circumcised. Never, you know. Uh, going back to our topic, uh, this Muhammad is a, in the TV. This is how you win a debate because you, you yeah, I win a debate because I insist that a Muslim he can't escape the topic. The topic is circumcision. Okay, we know that there's a verse in the Bible that says, you know, do circumcision for the Jews. We know that. But why your prophet? You Muslim, you follow who? You don't follow Muhammad. Because if you follow Muhammad, Muhammad never did circumcision. There's one of two reasons. Either because he's a female, but you Muslims, even female, circumcised. And by the way, how in the world you circumcise a female, you idiot? You Muslims are confused about who is the one who have a penis. So the God of the Jews, he told them to circumcise the men. You Muslim, you circumcise your women? Do your women look like men? Going back to this uh, potato, peace be upon him. Uh, 
Yeah, this guy. Was Paul true apostle? He says yes. And then he says, why the Catholic attribute his tradition to the 12 uh, and Jesus himself? You know, I don't know. When people, they speak about uh, about Paul, uh, when he's, on one hand, they say is Paul is an apostle, and they say yes. They gave the answer. And then they say, how come the Catholic? What the Catholic have to do with this anyway? All of us Christians accept what Paul says. <laughs> and then just to show you that we don't want to stay with this idiot for long. And then he says, Paul rejects circumcision for the Giro Roman convert. Yes, first of all, he did not reject, you know, uh, he and all the disciples, as you are the one who called for us, chapter 15, or Act 15. It says all the disciples agree that they should not, and they do not need it, because we are, we are saved by faith anyway, and by the grace of the Lord. But here you see the hypocrisy and the lies of those people. You will see that he said that Paul he rejected the council, the the, uh, uh, the conclusion of the first council of Jerusalem, which is very weird to say, because it is all the disciples agree that uh, the new convert they do not need to do so. In the same time, he says as he did to the council of Nicaea. As I know, Paul was not there. I mean, when the Council of Nicaea was uh, made, Paul, he did reject the Council of Nicaea? Uh, that's deep. I mean, it's true, you know? Yeah, the cancer of Nikia, my friend. All he rejected. And here you learn how you can take your knowledge from Abdul. Uh, uh, you know, as I know that Paul, he was like, uh, you know, he lived uh, in the, you know, I mean, I mean, there is only about 300 years different between him and the cancer of Nikia, only maybe. Looked like Paul, he was living for hundreds of years, and we do not know. Hmm. It happened to me, actually. I have a grandfather. He died holding a stick, as you know. His name is Solomon. Nobody noticed that he's dead. And he was holding a stick for hundreds of years. So when the cancer of Nikia came, uh, my grandfather, he was there. He did not talk, by the way, because obviously he's dead. I mean, but apparently he was alive. I mean, look how silly, how stupid they are, how dummy, how far they can go with their stupidity, how much they are desperate. So they are not worse our time. But just for a snack, we decide to give you this comment. Now, if we have any Muhammadan would like to call us, feel free. And we have a question if Muhammad is a prophet of Allah and he was following the teaching of the Jews, as he claimed. And if we have the same God, and you know what, the guy, he says we have the same religion, right? Well, our belief, our God is a spirit. Is the God of the Muslims a spirit? If we have the same, if we are the same religion, or the same belief, then their God have to be a spirit. Allah is not a spirit. Ask any Muhammadan. Allah is not a spirit. If we have the same God, we should have the same nature of God, and we should have the same heaven. The heaven of the Muhammadan is nothing but effing. Go watch my debate with the Muslim when I ask him, uh, uh, Allah, he says in the heaven, uh, whatever you wish. What if somebody he wished to eff you? He said, so what? What if somebody wished to eff Muhammad? So what? What if somebody wished to eff his mother? He's sick. So what? Allah, he says, whatever you, whatever you wish. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to join us and call us? Anyone? So I want you to remember one thing. When a Muslim he speak about circumcision, ask him how come you're a prophet never 
circumcised. Never. How come? Any Mohammedan? Uh, we have uh, this person, he says, Christian Prince, you are a great deep eater. It is time for you to come out of the hiding. My friend, I can say that you have a mental illness and you, each time you come here, you say the same word. I think this is what your wife, she said to you before you sleep. You have a great penis. It's time to make it come out from the hiding. This is why you don't have kids. Idiot. How I am in the hiding and I'm publishing my books and I'm speaking to public, making seminar, speaking to millions of people. It is you who is in the hiding, you potato. I am a great debater and you are just a robe. And you are a useless robe. Uh, do we have any Muslim here who would like to talk to us? I mean, where are those people coming from with this stupid comment and, and, and great debater and you know, come from the hiding? Who is hiding? What do you want to do? I mean, well, if I open the camera, what that would do for you? You like to see me? Eh? Do that make you excited? Happy? Stupid people. People here are lining up to listen to me, what I will say, not how I look like. None of us saw Jesus. We never saw him. But to read his book, And we believe in him, but we did not see him. So only silly ones, they say silly words. So come out of your silly stupidity. Do we have any Muhammadan? Anyone? You know, uh, people, they uh, sometimes they get surprised about how, let us say, harsh I am. But I find it the easiest way to show a person how stupid he is, is to be harsh with him. You know, I don't sugarcoat things. As it is, I mean, you say stupid things, I will shower you. Try me. I don't care how you feel. So do we have any Muhammadan would like to call us or join us? Uh, Abu Sajid, okay, Abu Sajid, I'm going to explain to you the question, but do you, do you, your majesty, do you feel strong and confident enough to go and call me and ask me the question? What do you think, guys? We have a Muslim, his name is Abu Sajid. I don't know how you can be Abu Sajid, uh, because obviously he is a Sajid. Do you know what Sajid mean? The one who is bowing down. So how he was, how he is a bowing down, and you are his father. If he is bowing down, this means he never been in the belly of your wife. But I will answer your question if you are brave enough to call me. However, even if you aren't brave enough to call me, then you are going to force me to answer your question. Everybody will laugh at you. Choose one, which one you want? Choose one. Abu Sajid, do you like to text me in Skype and I'll talk to you? I want to see if Abu, you know, in the Middle East, they call like Abu, Abu is supposed to, he's like, he's the man, Abu, you know, but none of them have men and kids. Muhammad himself don't have kids. Abu Qasim. Like, what is Qasim? His name is Abu Qasim, but you don't have Qasim. I mean, shouldn't you have Qasim first before you call yourself Abu Qasim? The, the Muhammad is like somebody who calls himself the guy with the... It's like saying uh, Sam Shamoon, the guy with the hair. Like, the guy don't have hair. This guy is texting, uh, call, trying to call me, and he's a Christian. Let me block him. And he texts me, and he said to me, I'm confused. What is stay confused? As if I care. Abu, are you willing to call me or not? I will call you as long you don't deflect like a kid. Well, as long, listen, as long I am deflecting like a kid, that will make it easier for you to make fun of me. I mean, come on, you are talking to a kid. Are you worried? 
that someone you 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 say he is a kid is going to make you look stupid that doesn't make sense text me potato be the man are you going to text me okay who want to bet that abu sajid don't dare and now he is holding his private part and hiding it so he will not hit over his nuts and he's trying to change the topic. He don't want to talk to me no more. He will not call me. Abu, are you a man who can make his word come true? Speak by your mouth. Oh, what you need to do, call me. And say the question. That's it. You want to stay, you can stay. You want to leave, you can leave. I mean, the question is there. You don't even dare to say the question to me. Are you there? Okay, I will change your name then to Abu Fart. So Mr. Abu Fart, he made a fart. He said, explain to me, explain why your God had to sacrifice himself to save you from himself. First of all, can you show me where in the Bible it says that God had to sacrifice? Can you show me where it says he had to? I will give you 20th century from now. You are a potato like your prophet. You say words, you do not know what you are saying. <clears throat> And then you said, to save you from himself, uh, uh, I will take your logic. So, if God, he order us for something, he should not sacrifice to save you from himself. That's deep. Abdul, let us open the Quran and then everybody will be dying laughing at you. Is it your God? He sacrifice? To save you from himself. And this is a story, Muhammad, as usual, he stole from the Jews. Read with me, Allah. It says here, that your God, he asked his followers to do Qurban. Look how many times the word Qurban appear in the Quran. Qurban, Qurban, Qurban. And by the way, this is an Aramaic word. This is not an Arabic. Proving again that Muhammad is a, is a fraud. So, Qurban, okay. Why Allah needs Qurban? What Qurban mean? Qurban means a sacrifice. But I thought Islam is against sacrifice. Actually, you have two holiday, Ramadan. Ramadan. And the other one you call it Adha, but both of them they are Adha, which means Qurban, sacrifice. Right now, when at the end of this month, you will sacrifice thousands and thousands, it's not millions of animals. Qurban. So what kind of God he asks you to sacrifice to save you from himself? Isn't it you making sacrifice so you will not go to hell? But look what happened here. Allah. He sent the sacrifice to himself this time. Usually Allah, he asked the Muslim to do circumcise, uh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, sacrificing uh, to him. The Muslim do it. In this case, Allah, he did himself sacrifice. The chapter of a safat and you can read verse number 107. And we ransomed him among momentous sacrifice. Okay, so Allah, he gave sacrifice to himself to save you from his command. Are you there, Abu Sajid? Allah, he gave sacrifice to who? You see, I'm going with your logic. That my God, he gave sacrifice to himself? <laughs> You said that, not me. <laughs> Let us see if we have a Muhammad in here. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend, you are live on air. How are you? How are you? I'm very good. Why are you changing your voice? 
What do you mean? I don't know your voice. You are changing your voice, obviously. This is my voice. Oh, okay. So what do you want to say to us? Do you, are you watching the topic? I just want to say, like, just stop preaching, man. Ah, uh, okay. Do you like to read the Quran for me? I read the Quran every day. Okay, chapter 5, verse 14. Can you read it for me? Which one? Chapter 5, verse 14. Okay, hold on. Hmm. Did you find it? Give me one sec. Uh oh. It took him one second. He said, Give me one second, and he went underground. He hung up. Stop hating, okay? Stop. I mean, they are followers of the devil who spread the hatred between the Christians specifically, and they are complain about hatred. We don't hate you. Who said that we hate you? I never said we hate Muslims. No. Connection is bad. Give me 10 minutes. My friend, your connection was very good. You're a liar. You're trying to read what I gave you. You are shocked. You see, everybody knows how bad connection work. I mean, how your connection is bad, and you are texting me. Obviously, if you lost connection, you cannot text me. I mean, the same second you drop the call, the same second you text me, at least wait for two minutes. I mean, weirdo, man. But he opened this chapter, he see how stupid it is, and how stupid Islam is, and how hatred Islam teaching is spreading. And then he said, let me drop the call. Otherwise, I will drop dead if I keep talking to him. So we go back to our previous topic. As long as Abdul, he is gone. Allah, he gave ransom to who? Any Muslim would like to help us? Allah, he gave ransom to who? Abu Sufyan, are you there? Abu Sajid, sorry, Abu Sajid. Are you there, Abdul? Allah is giving sacrifice to himself to save the son of Abraham from himself? And why Allah is giving sacrifice? And why he called it, he called it a great, great, momentous, uh, I don't know if I'm saying the word, momentous, momentous. I think the English originally used to be Greek, isn't it? Like uh, Octavius, Octavius, Sarnsosius, you know? Momentous sacrifice, like what the heck? What kind of sacrifice is a crucifixion? What kind of a sacrifice is a slaughtering your own son? As long as you are speaking about sacrifice. Secondly, you stupid idiot. Jesus never asked the Jews to come and kill him. And this is how we get them busted. If you open your Quran, you stupid idiot, you will see that the Jews, they plan to kill Jesus. It's not Jesus. He said, hey, Jews, <laughs> hello, <laughs> come and kill me, man. <laughs> and by the way, don't forget to crucify me, okay? I like crucifixion. You are a stupid mentor like your prophet. I mean, if you want to make a lie, Muhammadan, come with a lie which fit with your Quran. Isn't it the stupid Quran says that Allah, he saved Jesus from the Jews, who they say, we kill Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah. It's not Jesus who come to them and said, hey, uh, please, uh, can you uh, kill me? Because uh, this, is, I, I, this is how I can save you. He did not say that. Their IQ is below zero. It's freezing.
Do you see it? Are you against your Quran now? Same time, here we notice that the, the Jews, they wanted to kill Jesus. And by the way, did you notice what Sheikh Omran, he said? Sheikh Omran, he agreed that the Jews did not kill Jesus. He said, this does not make sense. Are you saying to me, he, actually, he said, stop your nonsense. Stop your nonsense. Are you saying to me that Allah, he placed someone else on the cross? Someone he did nothing? Nothing wrong? Let us go to the video of Amran. Let us find it first. We actually, we need to add this uh, video, this part uh, into the intro of our, of our video. He said, stop your sense. Stop your nonsense. Nonsense. Stupid religion. Stop your nonsense. Watch with me and laugh. What did Allah do to make it appear that he died? Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh because that's the only language some people can understand. See, even Muslims agree. The only language the Muhammadan they understand is a harsh language. Do you see it? Give me five, brother. We agree. Here we go. Finally, we find something we agree together about. Those people, they agree only with harsh language. If you speak to them in a different language, they don't even listen. Abdul is what you can say. Okay, continue. Let me warn you. Like, warn us about what? Well, about what exactly? What did Allah do to make it appear? Make it appear. That he died. Let me warn you. And my language is sometimes very harsh because that's the only language some people can understand. Don't come with this nonsense. Because it is not only pathetic nonsense, it is absolutely sinful to say that Allah, when I billah min hadha, Allah calls someone else to take the appearance of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And that innocent man, innocent because he never claimed to be the Messiah, he was crucified. Wait for judgment day with that. Nonsense! Nonsense, you idiot! Nonsense! Stupid Muhammadan, do you hear it? Nonsense. And not only that. Where the Muslim brought the story from? I challenged them to tell me where they got the story from. Tell me where your nonsense coming from. Hmm? the black stone kissers you see Muhammad he tried to insert his head in Judaism and Christianity to make himself look like legitimate religion but all of us we knew that the God of Islam have nothing to do with our God the worship of Islam have nothing to do with our worship the ethic of Islam is below million times zeros the nature of their God is different from the nature of our God. The heaven of their religion is not the same heaven of our belief. So what, what is left? Nothing. I have a question. I am a Christian though. Your name is a Christian though. Okay. Nice to meet you. This is the first time I see somebody. His last name is though. Okay. Do we have any Muslim here would like to call me and tell me something good? 
this guy he says give me 10 minutes my connection is bad well 10 minutes is gone still he is not texting me back looks like the connection will stay bad for the coming century Hello? Who is a Mohammedan? Would like to get us busted. Life on air. Open challenge. Anyone? Let us call this guy who said he wants 10 minutes because his connection is bad. I mean, look at the lies. I guess he maybe is, he went offline, maybe now. I think he's offline. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> Do we have any Abdul? Mayday, Mayday, stop your nonsense. Seventy percent of the Quran verses you have debunked are not included in your book. The deception of Allah. Well, my friend, my book, Deception of Allah, is just to give you a great tool uh, to refute Islam. It's not to write about every verse in the Quran. Otherwise, then I'll have to make a book like ten thousand pages. When we write a book, you know, there's a, there's a, there's a book is written it's like fast food, you know, like a sandwich, like, you know, our brother here, Sheikh Umad, Umad, he made a video. I don't know if you watch it, a mix, you know, mix, which is a summary of the barbecue we did last time to this guy he called himself perfect Dawa. So my book is not like that. My book have a lot, a lot, a lot of details you never heard before, but we cannot cover all the details in a book anyway. We have enough details to destroy Islam. Do we have any Abdul would like to join us? Anyone? Who is a Muslim would like to join us? Anybody? Mayday, mayday, mayday. Listen carefully. If you call me and you are able to make a defeat, do you know how much Allah will love you? How big your penis will be? Because your God is a God of penis. I mean, if this is not important, why your prophet promised you English penis? If you call me and debate me and you refute me, your penis not only will be endless, Your penis will be in. I don't know if it's not English. It's going to be what? And okay, it's going to be in seven up. I don't know. I have to add something. I mean, endless penis. So your wife, she is next to you, and your penis is going to the seven galaxy. And then, honey, she says, "When are you going to do it?" You say to her, "I don't know. I mean, my penis is way far away." Can you make it uh, make a U-turn? Uh, no, sorry, I cannot. It's so tough. It cannot bend. You know, it's unbendable. I mean, what kind of promise this promise is? Even the promise is beyond stupidity. Not only the story is beyond stupidity. The promise is really, really stupid. I mean, my wife is here and my penis is there. Okay, honey, what is your penis now? I have no idea. Do you have a GPS at the tip of it? So we can find out in the map. Oh, it's endless. There's no satellite can cover it. You know what? What if your penis went to Russia and those, the army of Russia of Karadorov, they are a bunch of thieves and they start cutting it off pieces and make soldiers. As you see, Putin, he sent them to fight in Ukraine and they have no food with them. A bunch of thieves. 
What if your penis went inside the rivers of the Amazon? Do you know what kind of fish there is in this, this water? I mean, they eat everything. Literally. I don't know how much exciting the news is to have an English penis, but that's really scaring the hell of me. I don't want to have that. Do you know what the communists in China, they can do with your penis? I mean, those people, they eat everything there. Turtle, chicken, I mean, you name it. Chinese restaurant, you know, just go there, they eat anything. Your penis go to Beijing. I mean, even the name of the capital is called Beijing. You know why? Because, uh, you know, your, your penis is a bee and gene. Will be a gene in their, you know, barbecue. Do we have any Muhammadan he want to convince us that Islam is a true religion and Muhammad is a true prophet? Look like today we are out of customers. Anyone? The title of the topic today, you know, the title is supposed to be, we and Muslim, we have the same religion. I mean, can you believe it? That we and Muslim, we have the same religion. Also, this is what one Abdul, he said. And look, this is Zakir Naik. He put his head inside the black stone. I mean, how disgusting, how stupid. How false to believe that God he sent the stone. Who sent the black? Do you remember the conversation I had with the Muslim is called convert to Islam something? So I asked him, brother, I have a question. Uh, I did it live here with you. You remember? So I asked him, oh, oh, I have a question. Why Muslims kiss the black stone? The guy took him like five, ten minutes to answer. And he says, because it's holy. And then I said, why it's holy? He said, uh, uh, sorry, uh, why the Muslim kiss the black stone? He says, because the, uh, uh, yeah, because it's holy. I said, why it's holy? He said, because the prophet kiss it. I said, why the prophet kiss it? He said, because it's holy. We kiss it because the prophet kiss it. Why the prophet kiss it? Because it's holy. And why it's holy? Because the prophet kiss it. Any Muslim can tell us why you Muslim put your head inside stone in the shape of a vagina. And by the way, I'm not making things up. This is stone, according to Islamic interpretation, was a vagina. Women, they used to put their hand over their vagina when they have their period, and I can show the reference. And they place their hand in front, in, inside the, the black stone in order to get fertilized. And you know, just to make it more simple, in case you do not know, there's nothing left of this black stone. I mean, this is here showing you that Islam is a, is a fraud. How this black stone is going to witness for us in the judgment day? And nothing left of it. If I go right now and I search for the black stone, let me do that. You Muslims, you should change the name. You should call it the Wax stone because there's no stones there. Look with me. I will put the images in the screen so you will laugh. The Muslim, they do maintenance. They do maintenance. There's no stone left. There's little tiny, little tiny rocks. The rest is a wax. Do you see that? This is a proof that Islam is a fraud. Because if Allah, he sent the black stone in the shape of a vagina, may Allah bless the vagina of Allah. How come Allah could not preserve the stone? Look what is left. Where is the black stone? little tiny rocks and the rest is wax. So when the Muslims, they claim that they are going and, they, and the black stone will witness for Allah, 
in the judgment day? Well, shouldn't Allah then preserve the stone? Do we have any Muhammadan? You can go right now and search in YouTube the maintenance of the black stone in Mecca. Just search for it. They bring a guy from Pakistan and he have a heating gun and he have wax, expensive wax by the way, they use expensive, you know, it's coming from the popo of the bees. Any Muhammadan? And then you ask the Muhammadan, okay, why Allah he sent the black stone and then every one of them he will give you a different story, as usual. Nothing new, you know, ever one different story. And then they say that, do you know that Allah, he chose the location of the Kaaba? Allah, he chose the location of the Kaaba. Are you sure, Abdul? Yes, absolutely. Alhamdulillah. Okay. As long as you are sure, how do you explain this to me? As long as Allah is the one who chose the location of the Kaaba. Why Allah, he chose the Kaaba in the location where all the people of the town would go there when the little rain come. Do you see it? The Kaaba is flooded by people. You know, remember in Mecca, there's no sewage. And the reason there's no sewage is because there's no river. You know, you need water to keep pushing, you know, you need a lot of water. So what they have, they have something called al-bayyara. Al-bayyara is like a septic tank. So when a rain happened, which is not always happened, it's a desert as you know, all the pupu in those holes in the town will come out, will flood because pupu flood, mashallah. You know, like in case you are dying something, you know, there's a flood happen, hold you. You know, hold yourself with some dry poopoo and you'll flat with it. Alhamdulillah. And then all the dirty water will go down to the lowest part of the town, which is the Kaaba. So how Allah is the one who chose the location? And look at this guy. This guy is, is, uh, this guy is taking a swim. This guy is taking a swim. Look at this. Allah chose the location. So imagine you hire an engineering company to choose the best location for you to build your house. And then we find out that they chose the worst location where it's going to be flood by poopoo. This is alone is enough to prove. And you know what? Let us say it is the lowest location in the town, but can't Allah change the direction of the water? This is his house. Can't Allah save his house from the poopoo flooding? It's just a question. Any Muhammadan? <clears throat> Anyone? Isn't it this alone is enough to prove Islam to be stupid? This is the most holy place for Allah, Allah. He, and not only the Muslim, they have videos saying that the Kaaba is in the center of the earth. <laughs> I thought it is my bedroom. How it is the center of the earth, brother? Is the earth flat? Is it a... Anyway, the center of the earth. Any Abdul? By the way, those who don't receive notification when we go live, don't forget to subscribe to our Patreon. I see the admins are not posting it to subscribe. You can subscribe there regardless if you donate or not. And you will receive notification about when we go live because YouTube obviously don't support our work. So they dodge down our numbers. Many people don't receive notification, even if you turn it on. So subscribe to Patreon, so you will receive email immediately from Patreon to inform you. 
that we are going live. Do we have any Abdul? Anyone? Anyone? What is the brave, you know? What happened? What is the proud Muhammadan? Islam is amazing religion, brother. Anybody? You know, I liked, by the way, I like to convert to Islam. Uh, but then I said to myself, if I can do breastfeeding for adult in this earth, why I wanna go to heaven? I mean, here I have a free milk. According to Islam, any woman, she should give her breast to you. How yummy. We men, we do not need to buy Pepsi Cola anymore. No water. Go anywhere. But you have to be in Islamic land. You feel thirsty. Ask them for the nipples. I mean, everything about this religion is weird, is stupid. A stone in the shape of a vagina, a stone used to place their hands inside when they have their blood, from period. And they used to go naked around the Kaaba. Like Muslims, what, what was the religion? Was a practice, and the people go naked around the Kaaba before Muhammad and in the time of Muhammad. Anyone can tell me? And why Muhammad never spoke, not even a single verse in the Quran, against it? Any Muslim can tell me why? Muhammad, he have time to make verses about Solomon speaking to the ant and the ant speaking to Solomon. But he don't have time from his God to say, stop going around the Kaaba naked. Totally naked. No bikini. No bikini in the state of nudity. What was the religion of Muhammad? And what was the religion of those who pray in front of the Kaaba? And why they have to go totally naked? Hey Muslims, I have an idea. You can get a lot of money from this. I mean, you will get a lot of perverted people going there if you switch to the old tradition. Actually, already they are doing that. I mean, women, they are not allowed to wear panties, and Muslims, they wear a sheet. There is nothing there. It's just a sheet. Any Muslim can tell me what was the religion? Require you to go around the Kaaba naked? And until now, nothing changed. And why no verse in the Quran is speaking against it? Allah was blind? Hmm? The Muslims, they are chasing us for circumcision. You need to circumcise yourself, brother. This is in the Old Testament. You need to circumcise. Okay, what, what the heck? Okay, your prophet never been circumcised. And the Kaaba was a place of nudity. And imagine if I was at that time and I go and I have live internet and I go live in YouTube. Oh boy. Man, I will get a billion of you in 10, 10 minutes. You will see women, they are walking around the Kaaba and it says, and each time they see that, oh boy, look at this guy. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, this guy has penis look weird. Oh man, look at this penis. Oh boy, well, well he's going to the left. Oh, this penis, this guy is going to the right. Oh man, why it's so small? Oh, this is so big, man. This is religion. And then the men, they look at the vagina. Oh boy, look at this vagina. It looked like weird, really. I mean, it have teeth. Oh, look, this vagina have ears. Oh boy, she have wrinkles there. Oh, look at this. She have earring. Oh, she have a tattoo. What the heck? This is where the Kaaba, so Allah, he refused a Christian army, according to the Quran, the chapter of the elephant, 
he sent an army of bird, phantom bird, and they destroyed the army of the Christians. And he did not get upset from the Arab going around his house totally naked. I think the Kaaba was called Nikedin at that time, the Nikedin land. Do we have any Muslim? Why you people are laughing? This is reality. Come on. Imagine yourself walking there and you see all those scenery, you know, like penises moving like, you know, right and left, you know, and women vaginas and, you know, look at her ass. Mashallah, Alhamdulillah. This is big. This is bigger than my TV. Alhamdulillah. You know, why they were going naked? Who want to who wanna, who wanna volunteer to tell me what was exactly the religion? Is a practice and Muhammad was following it. Remember, we have Sheikh Uthman, may Allah bless his uh, uh, tomato sauce. He said that Muhammad, remember, Muhammad was from Quraysh, he is not Abrahamic, and they are pagan. <laughs> I want to buy tomato sauce. Oh boy. Do we have any Abdul? <laughs> And then they speak that Islam is against paganism. This is the Kaaba, the most filthy place ever. And not only that, if you go in the, I mean, this Christian prince, he keeps saying to us, not only that, and then he got us with something really scary. Look at this. The, the Muslims in the time of Muhammad, they witness that we as an Arab, we used to worship stones. Worship what? Stones. And if we find a stone better than the stone we are worshiping, we throw the previous stone, and we worship the new stone. Read it. This is Sahih al Bukhari. Like, what the heck? Yes, this is Sahih al Bukhari. <coughs> we used to worship stones. And when we found a better stone than the first one, we would throw the first one and take it the better. Okay, so the Muslim, the, the Arab, they found a stone. Better than previous stone, the black stone. It looked weird. It's a metaur, maybe. We worship the stone. It's in front of you. And not only that, should I continue? I mean, this is English, man. This guy, he keeps saying to us, but not only that, and then he throw, he throw some dust on us. By the way, how many of you here is first time? If you are here first time, I warn you, you should leave immediately. This is what will happen. Your wife, she will send me a text. She said to you, she will say to me, because of you, we are going through divorce. I say, what the heck? What I did? I said, my husband stay in the computer six hours until you finish. He don't talk to us. He don't take lunch. He don't, he takes sandwiches. He don't talk to his kids no more. He don't go even to buy grocery because he's listening to you. What the heck? This is what would happen to you. You better leave. Your wife, she would hate me. Unbelievable. Honey, do you want to eat? No, I don't want to talk now. There is some Christian press. Look, look, look what he's seen. <laughs> you, come on. Don't you want to eat? You are in the computer. This guy don't go to sleep. Unbelievable. And by the way, I am not the only source of divorce, according to the Quran. According to the Quran, Allah is the only source. He sent two angels to open the school of Harut and Marut to teach black magic, so your wife will fight with you. I mean, look how deep the cult it is. The wife and the husband, they are fighting because of Allah. He opened a school of Harut and Marut and the Babylon Tower. That's deep. You think that's, you know, you are not getting along with your wife. Maybe your mother-in-law, she's involved. Maybe. But no. The source of the problem is, is Allah. Allah, he opened a school of magic. Chapter of the cow. I mean, even the name of the chapter scared the hell of me. I mean, imagine. There's a God. He made a book. 
and then he made verses. And then he decided that the best name of his book is the cow. You know what? I'm really surprised that he did not say a cowboy. I mean, it's only missing just the word boy. Muslims, why in the chapter of the cow, the story of the black magic is located? Shouldn't you have a different chapter for this? I mean, call it the chapter of the Babylon. By the river of the Babylon, where we sat down, hey, hey, we will. Like magic in the Babylon? Things are getting more exciting now. So, and when those angels, Harut, and look at the names of Harut and Mar I love their names. I mean, look at this. Harut and oh, both of them, what the difference between Harut and Marut? I don't know if you, if you notice with me. The first letter, H and M. And this is a name of a clothing store. You can find it in the mall. HM. You see where they stole the name from? I'm telling you. Everything, every business is successful in the world today is coming from the Quran. HM. Ha root. Ma root. Look how musical it is. I think they are twin, aren't they? I mean, their daddy, when he gave birth to them, he said, What I will call them, what I will call them, what I will call them. Ah, M. Ah, M. Okay, okay, this is the like initial, but I need to, and then oot, okay, oot, yeah, so ha root, and ha and ma root, makes sense. This is deep, by the way, this is very deep. Here you study how to analyze information. Okay, and the, uh, Muslims, what ha root mean and what ma root mean? Somebody can tell me? I will shave my 28 meter beard if you can tell me what Harut mean and where they, where they are and why Allah he sent them in the Babylon Tower what about John Kennedy Airport anybody tell me why it's the Babylon hmm? hello I'm sure those who they are not here first, I mean, they did not here come here. They are surprised about how stupid this religion is. But if you have a friend, the Muslim, they fool him, they convert him to Islam, etc. Let him contact me so we can help them. Same time, if you have a Muhammadan, he tried to fool you, tried to convert you to Islam. Challenge him to contact me. Tell him, if you can beat this guy, you got a point. What do you think, guys? If you can prove to us that Islam really even a religion, Islam is not even a religion. Islam is a co cocktail of, uh, of uh, fictions and stupidity, Hindus, Buddhas, Christianity, Judaism, Shangalism, Trumpism, Bidenism. By the way, Biden, he was in the Himalaya with the president of China. Did you hear it? Me and the, the president of China, they were in the top of the Himalaya. When? I mean, even Muhammad did not make that poo-poo. Oh, Muhammad, he did, actually. Muhammad, he went to the top of the mountain like Biden. And he tried to commit suicide by throwing himself many times. I mean, look at this prophet. How confident he is and how much his personality is stable. I mean, he is not suffering from mental illness, obviously. He decided to kill himself by throwing himself from the top of the high mountain. Yeah, hold on, Muslims. I mean, there's many ways to kill yourself. Why Muhammad, he decided to climb all the way. I mean, why he don't do it in the house, go to the kitchen, get a knife, kill yourself. Why he need to throw himself from the top of the high mountain? I mean, why you need to walk all the way to hike to the top? Anyone? Look at this. The divine inspiration was also posed. What the heck? You know, first time I like I start learning English, like I bought a recorder, you know, it says Bosd. 
I click in it or I push it and then the music stop paused you know but I never thought that Allah used that to click too it's amazing it looked like the Japanese when they made so, so, uh, Sony recording uh, stereo they took the paused option from Allah I'm telling you everything is coming from Allah Look how many things we discover. We discover that HM is coming from Allah. Paused is coming from Allah. Allah decide to pause is inspiration. Okay, inspiration, you pause now. Ping. That's deep. That's really deep. I'm going to copy this and save it for my dictionary. So in the future, if I make a book, I will use it. You know, I hope nobody notice. Uh, that because this is validation of uh, the Kerberi uh, 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 right, you know, the copy, copy term, term, uh, right press, that stuff, you know. This is, I, I hope nobody heard me saying I will use it for in my coming book. Hey, Muslims, can I use the, the word pause? Because obviously, the one, the first one who came with it, it was Allah. Allah, he paused <sighs> deep, very deep. Very, very deep. I mean, it doesn't matter how many I do. This is the, this is a Middle Eastern, by the way, Middle Eastern style, like, like you know, something wrong happened. Like it's like a chicken, you know. Like, yeah, but anyway, as you know, that Prophet Solomon, he learned the language of the birds. True. And if you don't believe me, I did learn the language of the birds too. So I went to the same school. Look, Alhamdulillah, I graduated from the same school, and me and Prophet Solomon, we spoke the same language. Man, that's so good. Oh boy. Hey Muslim, why Allah he taught Solomon the language of the birds? Anyone have an idea? I mean, look how many questions we gave them. Those people, they cannot even answer one. They keep hitting them with the questions. Why Allah, he taught him the language of the birds? I mean, what is the logic of that? Huh? Any Mohammedan? You don't believe me, I speak language of birds, huh? Ah, you don't believe me. <laughs> I feel sorry for you. I went to the same school. Remember, I'm a Middle Eastern. And uh, Solomon is my cousin, all right? And I asked uh, my grand-grandfather, where Uncle Solomon, he went to the, to learn the school, the speech of the birds. And then I went there and Mr. Turkey, he was our professor. You know, I don't know what he's saying in the beginning, but after that, I start learning, you know. It took me some time, to be honest with you. And you know, my teacher, he lost all his feather in order to teach me one word. I mean, the guy, he was getting naked, literally. He was ripping himself apart trying to teach me how to say hamburger. And I keep saying Dumburger. I say hamburger, he say hamburger, I say Dumburger. Unbelievable, I mean, <laughs> the Pink Panther. So, and Solomon was David higher. He said, oh ye people, we have taught the speech of the birds. <laughs> That's deep. Does God insist to send Solomon to learn the language of the chicken? Unbelievable. And even the ducks walk, 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 walk. All the birds, you name it. Turkey, chicken, walk, walk, whatever you want. He speak it all. With all accent. Don't forget the accent. Because the chickens from Africa, they have different accent from a chicken in, in Iraq. <laughs> Hello? Come on. Maybe in the same town sometime, you know, people have different accent. Chicken are the same. He learned all the language of all the birds and he speak all the dialect and all the accent. He Muslims, anyone explain to us? So you come to us and you speak about God and science. I mean, look at this madness. What is this? Why God, he taught Solomon the language of the birds? Hit me with the answer. Any Abdul? 
Would you marry an Arab Middle Eastern woman? I mean, guys, look, hold on. This is a serious question. Look what we are talking about. We are talking about the language of the birds. And somebody thinking, would you marry a Middle Eastern woman? Oh boy. Uh, now I know why Shakespeare, he said, to be or not to be, this is the question. He was asking me to be a Middle Eastern or not to be Middle Eastern. That is the question. I mean, where we are focusing and where you are focusing. Focus with me. Unbelievable. Sure, for sure, first of all, uh, uh, I will, I, I can't speak, uh, I can't marry any women because I speak the language of the birds. Women, they speak the, the language of the credit card. I mean, you speak to a woman, what she will say to you, what you bought me for Valentine. What the heck? I said to her, she said, what? Are you saying you don't have a gift? So I am a person who speaks the language of the birds. Women, they speak the language of the credit cards. How we can uh, even talk? We cannot talk. Like, what's your name? Visa. Uh -huh. uh, okay. Do we have any Abdul? Any Abdul? Yeah, I agree. Not all women, because some women, they, ac they accept PayPal. <laughs> Not all women, man. What are you talking about? Not all women, they use a credit card. Some of us, we accept cash. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Marut is God in the wind of Hindu Hinduism. I don't know if you can give me a source for maybe later you can post a, a link for it in the comment section so people can read about Marut, the God in the Hindu religion. I would like to read that, no problem. Any Mohammedan? I'm drinking coffee, by the way, heavy, very heavy duty coffee. Once I gave my neighbor, he said, what are you are drinking? I said, coffee. He said, I can have some? I said, sure. The guy, he called me second day. He said, I could not sleep all night. What you gave me? <laughs> you have no idea what we drink. What we drink is not coffee. It's the, is Harut and Marut in the coffee, brother. Anyway, do we have Abdul? Why today we have no Abdul? I mean, what happened? Why it's dry? Let me check the weather news. Any question you ask the Muslims, you see, Muslims, they can be successful. Uh, you know the guy who, who, uh, who called me two days ago, the guy who called himself Perfect, perfect Dawa? Uh, one of you, he sent me the link of, uh, I mean, after we finish, uh, I, I don't open link, so I searched the name in uh, in YouTube, and I found him debating with David Wood and Apostate Prophet. And then suddenly this guy, he is schooling David Wood and Apostate Prophet about Arab words, but the guy don't speak Arabic. So what those people, they do, they focus in you, who are you? how much you know, and where we can play. Like there is a space. You need a space. They need a space to play. So if you don't speak Arabic, this is their space. They can lie as much as they want. They can say this is false translation. They can say whatever they want. They look for the space. The problem with me, there's no space. It's sold out. It doesn't matter where you go. I will get you busted. Any Abdul? Any Muhammadan? Who is a Muslim would like to jo join us? May they, may they. Oh, it's a, it is Ramadan. They are eating now. <laughs> you know, Ramadan is the month, a month of fasting. In fact, it's the month of eating. All Muslims in Ramadan, they get fat. Especially females. <clears throat> Any Abdul?
anyone that's it we are out of them what we can do you guys somebody of you wearing a cross because you know those people they have a phobia from the cross the funny is that the Muslim they call people who expose Islam Islamophobic and the Muhammadan is the one who have a phobia from pork cross Bible church uh, chocolate even chocolate you know they discover chocolate have pork in it uh, they have phobia of everything the phobia from the Jews phobia from the Christian phobia from the Hindus uh, phobia it's religion of phobia and then they say we are phobia of phobic people <clears throat> would you talk about uh, Muhammad boyfriend al Kalbi? well you know al Kalbi, obviously he was a person who accompanied Muhammad a lot of time and he was the most handsome young man in Quraysh and there is something nobody can explain why the relation between Muhammad and al Kalbi is so strong al Kalbi mean by, by the way the dogs al Kalbi is the dogs his last name but you will notice that Muhammad he claimed that when Jibril come to him he come to him in the look of Dahi al-Kalbi and for sure that will bring a lot of questions and showing us something fishy about Muhammad. Muhammad, he could not explain why this person he stay in his house all the time. Once there is a story about Ibn Abbas, who was a kid, he entered the house and he said, I saw them in a special situation. But what it is, it doesn't say in Arabic, you know, like a special situation. And then Ibn Abbas, he said to Muhammad, he told to his cousin, but isn't it, this is Dahil Kalbi? He said to him, he is, he looked like the Hilkalbi, but this is the angel of Allah. Look with me here, what it says. This is Sahih al Bukhari, it says. <clears throat> uh, Verily, Allah, all knower, all aware of all things between two brackets, then he said, No one, uh, no, by the one who sent Muhammad with the truth, with guidance and glad tidings. I do not know him more than any among, man among you. That was Jibreel, peace be upon him, who come down in the form of Dahi al-Kalbi. Do you see it? Muhammad, he could not explain why this man spent all night with him. And when they find him with him, in his small room, he claimed, and then he leave right away, by the way. When he come, he leave the guy. He claimed that this is the angel Jibreel. Who is a Muhammadan really is convinced that Jibreel, he took the look of the Hil Kalbi? And why he took the look of the Hil Kalbi? Is he out of look? Because now we have two the Hil Kalbi in town. We have the angel Jibreel, and we have the Hilkalbi. How we will know which one is the one? How Muhammad himself knew which one is the one? If both of them, they look the same, exactly the same. And here you notice the, the, the idea of a cloning is all over in Islam. You know, Allah, he cloned someone look like Jesus. Allah himself, he cloned a look different from his look and the Muslim, they reject him. Isn't, isn't Muhammad, he says, Allah will come to them in a, in a shape other than the one which they saw first time? And this is, as you see, Sahih. They cannot say this is weak and this is, you know. And by the way, if you later watch the video and you are asking yourself how I can get those references, it's very easy. Try to type one line, choose a unique line in the, in the text you see. Search it in Google, you will find the reference. Like you can type who came down in the form of the Hil Kalbi, write it as it is, you see it on the screen. Freeze the video, type it in Google, 
you will find the reference because later you find this video in different channel and you say okay i want to get this reference so always you can do that do we have any muhammadan Will you ever come to Australia? I will come. Okay, just let's listen. I will come to Australia. Just pay for my ticket and my hotel and uh, falafel, unlimited falafel supply, and uh, baklava. I will be there tomorrow. I mean, my friend, Australia is in the end of the world. What I will go there? And I heard that your government is doing crazy stuff with this, uh, uh, you know. Uh, restriction like mask and such stuff i know I, 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 will, I will not be able to breathe to to talk to the birds as i know i speak the language of the birds if i wear the mask what i can do you cannot speak to them i would love to go to australia why not i like i like to travel actually but you know since my grandfather he sold the flying carpet by mistake by the way he put it he came back home he found my grandmother she is doing garage sale i asked my dad in the time that time do you even have a garage? He said, no, we don't have cars at that time. We used to have camels and donkeys. I said, so why is she, why is she doing garage sale? He said, what I know, what I can do? Your grandmother, she was like advanced on time. She put a sign says garage sale and she put the flying carpet by mistake and somebody bought it. So please, if you know the person who bought the flying carpet, let me know. I mean, have you ever heard of a book claiming to be from God? And he claimed that Allah, he gave Solomon the flying carpet. Why he did not give it to Muhammad? Hmm? Why Muhammad, the poor guy, the only thing he got is Quran. I am planning to trip to Corinth, Greece. Have you been there? Uh, Dominic, don't remind me. You see, I am born long, long time ago. And I believe that I was like, you know, I'm the founder of Greece. Okay, I will tell you the proof of that I'm the founder of Greece. If we go to the Quran, oh, let us go first to the Hadith. The Prophet of Allah predicted that my cousins, they will be the majority of mankind. Who are they? They are the Roman and the Greece. Look at this. How Allah Prophet he knew this? Uh, where is the hadith? Uh, Let us find the hadith. Hold on. <clears throat> hmm. I mean, here you see, by the way, a clear sign that Muhammad is a prophet. Because how Muhammad, he noticed that the majority of mankind, they will be Roman. This is true. If you go to Indonesia, you will find all the Indonesian are Roman. Same as in China. Or Bangladesh. It's a clear evidence that Muhammad is telling the truth. The Roman, they will be the majority of mankind. It's in the front of you. Any Muslim? Okay, my friends, are you guys guys to ask me where you visit this, you visit that? I, I will go visit everywhere, but nobody's inviting me. This is the problem. You guys, talk is cheap. Unbelievable. Would you visit this? Would you visit that? You remind me of the Arab. They go to their houses. They say to you, do you like to eat in our house or in the restaurant is more tasty? What the heck? They are telling you, go and eat in the restaurant, obviously. Do you like to sleep in our house or the bed in the hotel is more comfortable? So don't tell me like you like to visit this and visit, invite me and you see, you know, 
unbelievable. I'm telling you, this is a, this is a very uh, fishy invitation, you know. Anyway, the Roman brother, they are the majority of mankind. And now we understand how Biden, he was in the top of the Himalaya with the president of China. Let me find the video. I mean, this, this guy is coming from where, this Biden? What what he take before he go on TV? He was in the Himalaya? In the top of the Himalaya, 14,000 feet. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, those things only happen to Joe Biden, you know? <laughs> he was in the top of the Himalaya. <laughs> And you know, the second day, the whole world is busy trying to figure out where really what, what Biden is talking about. He was in the top of the Himalaya. Like, what the heck? You were? Really? But the guy never been there. I mean, even Muhammad did not do that, Pupu. I'm so proud to have a president like this. I mean, we, we got the best president, you know? Yeah, he was like, uh, where is the video about him was in the top of the Himalaya? I, I cannot find it. No way, it should be all over YouTube. Uh, he was in the top of the Himalaya. Hmm. I know, I can't find the video. Uh, thank you, Asam. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you for all those who they are asking me if I can come there and there. Uh, I really appreciate you all. I'm just joking with you. I know that you mean it. You know, you mean it, and as long as you did not meet me, the second you meet me, you fly. You know, you, you say, you know what? I forgot my wallet at home. Stay here. And I will go and get it. No? Uh, yeah, I'm serious. He said he was at the top of the Himalaya. What are you talking about? You think I'm joking? Okay, now you are you are forcing me to find the video. Hold on, let me find it. I need to find it. I'm not going to give up. He was in the top of the Himalaya. How come there's no video is cutting? I found a video like 17 minutes. I'm not going to play 17 minute videos to find it. But you can search it anyway. You can search it and you can find it. It's very funny. What an idiot. In the top of the MLI, are you sure? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, by a helicopter, exactly. I mean, heli uh, the, the helicopter can go to the top of the Himalaya, you know? Especially if the copter is a special copter. It's a copterine coming from nectarine. Lord have mercy. Uh, you mean this one? I don't know if this is the one or not. Let us see. Let us copy your link and see if it is the one. So there's a music. You need to be careful when you send me a link. If there's a music, they can, if, you know, if the music is not allowed. But this video is weird too, low quality. And that's who traveled 17,000 miles when I was vice president. I don't know that for a fact. Traveling with him, 
I think we traveled 17,000 miles when I was vice president. I don't know that for a fact. That's what's happening. <laughs> what on earth is <laughs> Yeah, he was in the top of the Himalaya. The Himalayas with... He was in the top of the Himalaya. Where? Excuse me, the foothills of the Himalayas with Xi Jinping. He was with Xi Jinping. He was with who? With Xi 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 Bing Bing Bing, you know? I mean, come on. Anyway. Uh...